namo tathā bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tathā bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tathā bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa bhūtang dhammang saṅghang namasāmi Today is this uh, wonderful day. Uh, even the weather cooperated. <laughs> Bring sunshine. And uh, yesterday it looked rather dismal here. And <laughs> today it's all bright and sunny. And this year has been a very auspicious year for me especially. Uh, it's, an, it's not only the 60th reign of the ta- of His Majesty uh, King Pumiporn in Thailand, 60 years as king. So that's one during this year, and then it was my 40th Vasa and <laughs> 72nd birthday. It only <laughs> all seemed to. Uh, come together on this particular year. Plus, uh, the, the Sangha here in, in the UK is in, in real harmony. Uh, there hasn't been any discord this year. <laughs> and that's, that is a miracle. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, it was, uh, it's very, uh, and also, this is the 50th year of the English Sangha Trust, the EST. So the EST has been the, the uh, charitable organization set up 50 years ago, 1956, here in England, with a uh, venerable uh, Kapilawado Bhikkhu, an English Bhikkhu at that time, uh, had this idea of establishing foundation uh, so that Buddhist monks could come and live in in the UK. Uh, so this was his idea, the Venerable Kapilavada, who passed away many years ago. And so it was set up deliberately in an intentional way to support Buddhist uh, monks and nuns. So that it was, that's its purpose. It was never set up as some kind of uh, just Buddhist uh, foundation, but it was established particularly to, to make it possible for, uh, alms mendicants, Theravada alms mendicants to live in this country. And so when I arrived in 1977, 1976 was the first time I came, uh, the, the EST owned the Hampstead Bihara in London, and that was uh, moribund, nobody in it. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> so they, uh, and the previous year, uh, Venerable Ajahn Mahabur had visited England with Venerable Panyawado, English bhikkhu, and they they had uh, stated this. Uh, Bihara in Hampstead. And, uh, so they, uh, the, the Hampstead Bihara, the, the chairman, George Sharp, uh, was asking, uh, Venerable Mahabu about establishing something in, uh, in the UK. And, and so Ajahn Mahabu said, well, just you have to wait. That he didn't have anybody. And so it was a matter of waiting. So George, uh, kind of closed the Bihara down and, and then when I came in 1976, uh, on the way back to Thailand from the United States, I spent three days. This was the hot summer of 1976. And so it was like one of these, you know, I had this incredibly good impression of the warm, sunny English climate. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Because it was, it was it, it still, people still talk about the long hot summer of 1976. So <clears throat> anyway, that's when I first visited, and and at first I asked to stay at the uh, Buddha Patipa, what Buddha Patipa, the Thai temple, which was then in East Sheen. It wasn't in Wimbledon, and uh, and they were quite willing to have me, but they were full up. They didn't have it. So I'd have to live with about three other monks in one room. And, uh, and then, uh, Arjan Panyawada, the British monk, had told me to contact George Sharp. So he'd, he'd given me the address of George Sharp, who was at that time the chairman of the English Sangha Cha. So, seeing the, the crowded conditions at Wat Buddha Pratip, I phoned George Sharp and he, immediately came, took me to the Hampstead Mihara. And from there, uh, he kept coming and seeing me during the three or four days that I was in London and uh, seemed very interested and wanted me to stay on it. So I said, well, I can't really do that. You know, you have, you have to come to Thailand and talk this over with my teacher, Tanajan Cha in Uborn in uh, Northeast Thailand. So, uh, so George came a few months later to Thailand and, uh, Ajahn Chah put him to the great test. I told Ajahn Chah about this situation here and, uh, he kept, he didn't commit himself in any way, just looked his usual bemused expression without showing uh, either aversion or interest. <laughs> So I didn't know what to expect. So uh, when George Hart came, you know, then he he treated George not very nicely at first, and and so and I think you know I don't try a way of testing your metal to see what you are made of. And George, of course, managed to uh, accept everything, and uh, and eventually it was agreed upon that uh, he invited. Ajahn Chah and myself to come and live in uh, London, the Hampstead Mihara, uh, come to see anyway, come to inspect the situation. So that was, we arrived in England on May 6th, 1977. Memorable, what's one of those memorable days? So this will, so this is actually my 29th year, 30th year in living in England. So over that time, we the idea was to establish a forest monastery, and so the you know we weren't keen on living in London, and uh, but Ajahn Chah said to stay in London until we had a more of a feeling and and opportunities to know the situation. So we stayed in the Hampstead Vihara. And we went on the alms round every day. He told us to go Bindabad. And of course, near Hampstead Heath, a rather nice part of London, is a good walk. You know, so you could walk out of the Hampstead Vihar, walk up on Hampstead Heath in the morning, watch all these wealthy people wa- walking their Afghan hounds and... <laughs> <laughs> we used to see the most peculiar people up there in the morning. <laughs> and very seldom got any food. <laughs> but during that time, of course, we we uh, we we met the the gentleman that offered us the property in uh, Chitters. And during that two years in London, it was pretty. Uh, there was Ajahn Virtamo and Ajahn Anando with me, and. It was pretty tight squeeze. So, uh, at that time in Oxford, there was the Oakenholt Buddhist Center owned by Mr. and Mrs. Saw. And so they invited us, made an open invitation to, for us to come and stay there whenever we, we had the uh, occasion. So we had a relief during that two years of living in this lovely, uh, estate in Oxford. Uh, and, Live, and there we, we started giving retreats. And, uh, first meditation retreat I ever gave was at the Oakenhall Buddhist Center. 
in Oxford. So then, when we acquired Chithurst, then uh, that was in 1979, uh, then they, we moved out of London, we had sold the Hampstead Vihara in order to buy the property in, in uh, West Sussex. So during this time, this, 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 this uh, experiment, because all this time this was an experiment. Ajahn Chah only stayed in, in England about a month and then went back to Thailand. And I remember standing at Heathrow Airport saying goodbye to Ajahn Chah and then he left, went through the departure gates. And I felt bereft, you know, like being abandoned in this strange country. <laughs> How are you going to survive as a Buddhist monk? in a non-Buddhist country. <clears throat> now, Limpo Cha always had this uh, wisdom and faith in the goodness of human beings. And this always impressed me because being, having an American background, you, you kind of, and you kind of don't think people are basically good. You kind of assume that they're basically selfish. And they think of themselves and uh, and we, it's a kind of cynical, negative attitude that I had, you know, about the human nature in general. Well, if you'd have asked me at the time about human nature, I was that basically self-centered, selfish, and vain. <laughs> well, <laughs> and because I could see those qualities in myself, <laughs> but the, but the um, but Lumpur Chan. He never went along with that. And when I had my doubts about coming to live here in England, I, uh, and I asked him, you know, how, how was I expected to keep all the Vinaya rules? Uh, not handle money and all that if you're living in a society that doesn't understand what you are, you know. It was a very strange an anachronism in the whole European uh, context. And so he said, well, wherever there are good people, you can go there. He said, are there good people in England? I said, well, I'm sure there are. He said, <laughs> well, you can go. That impressed me because ever, I've always remembered that as a statement of Lung Po Cha's recognition of the goodness that is our humanity. That, And this, this I began to see as is very necessary to recognize that human beings are basically good. Because at this time, it is a very cynical age that we're living in, here in, in the, and everywhere in the world. It's very materialistic and, and, in, and of course caters to selfishness, self-centeredness and vanity. The, the modern society definitely encourages these qualities. Uh, of being self-centered and vain. And you can see that the result is in general confusion. And even in the, even in an affluent society like this one, there's so much suffering. Unhappiness, depression, drug addiction, alcoholism, mental illness, and all the rest. Uh, and yet in a country, society basically well run, stable, economically prosperous. And yet, the misery is is not due to because of the uh, political structure or the or the ec economics, but the way we think. We create this misery, this suffering, this negativity. And of course, this is what the Buddha was pointing to 2,550 years ago. All even numbers, isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not giving any lottery numbers. So. <laughs> Lumbo Cha was, a, was very much anti, you know, superstition or, or anything like that. But so 